All right, so for our balanced chemical equation, we get um, 2 HCl, 1 CaOH2, 2 water molecules, that's not what I wanted, 2 water molecules, and then um, 1 calcium chloride molecule. Um, okay, let's... Um, Let's figure out what's acid base conjugate acid conjugate base. Um, so, um, sorry, that is that's not what we're doing here. Um, so if we're starting with a um, a hydrogen, we're typically going to be an acid. So HCl hydrochloric acid is our acid, and then calcium hydroxide is our base. Um, and we're going to be producing water and our salt. Calcium chloride is our salt. So these are neutralization reactions. Acid plus base. We're producing water and then a salt. All right, um, our next thing that we're looking at is <clears throat> acid-base titrations. So um, with titrations, we are going to be um, trying to figure out a the molarity of an unknown acid or unknown base using um, a known concentration of the opposite, an acid or a base. Um, there is a video on Canvas that has like a brief overview of titration uh, reactions um, that I would suggest you looking at um, to just give you a brief overview. Here we got a bunch of definitions um, that we're going to be looking at. So, um, a titration, the process used to determine the concentration of a solution, often an acid or a base, in which the solution of a known concentration, the standard, is added to a measured amount of solution of unknown concentration until an indicator signals um, the endpoint. So let's talk about a bunch of those definitions. So first of all, indicator. Let's, we're going to add a dye, some type of dye, um, to our, um, our flask where we have an unknown concentration, um, either acid or base. Um, and that dye is going to change color depending on um, the pH of our solution. So um, phenolphthalein, that um, is an um, acid indicator. Um, so it's going to change color based on um, the pH of the solution, the unknown um, concentration. Um, the end point is the point in which in a titration at which the indicator changes color. So typically as we're changing pH, um, that's where we're gonna see our color change. Um, okay, and then our equivalence point, the point in a titration where the number of moles of hydrogen ions equals the number of moles of hydroxide ions. So typically that is going to be um, a neutral pH of seven. So that's our equivalence, um, equivalence point there. So with a pH of 7, neutral, our hydrogen ions equal our hydroxide ions. So um, I would suggest watching the, the video on Canvas um, about acid-based titrations. Okay, um, we're going to be doing titration problems here now. We need a balanced chemical chemical equation for these titration problems because we're going from one substance to another substance. So we need to go through moles. Um, unless we are using SAMAVA is equal to SBVBVB. So um, SA, that's our subscript of hydrogen in our acid. MA is the molarity of our acid. VA is the volume of our acid. Um, SB is the subscript of hydroxide in our base, so how many hydroxide ions we have um, in our base. MB is our molarity of our base, and VB is the volume of our base. So we need to know um, all of these except for one if we're going to be um, using that. Okay, so let's work on some problems. So. Um, we're going to do this two, two ways. So we're going to do the long way first and then, um, we'll do the shorter way. So, um, example number seven, the titration of 10 milliliters of HCl solution of unknown concentration requires 12.54 milliliters of a 0.1 molar, um, 
sodium hydroxide solution to reach the endpoint? What is the concentration of the unknown HCl solution? So we need our balanced chemical equation in order to do these. So hydrogen chloride plus sodium hydroxide, it's our acid and base. Those are both strong acids, strong bases. So this is a neutralization reaction. We're for forming water and um, sodium chloride, a salt. Okay, so we, um, we're going to start with the reactant, so either hydrogen um, chloride, so sulfuric, or sorry, um, hydrogen chloric, <sighs> hydrochloric acid, <laughs> or um, sodium hydroxide. We know more about sodium hydroxide than we do um, our hydrochloric acid. We're actually looking for something with hydrochloric acid, so we're holding off on anything hydrochloric acid until we've um, done our mole-to-mole -mole conversion um, sodium hydroxide to hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. Okay, so let's start with our um, single unit number. That's the 12.50 um, milliliters. And um, we are converting that guy to liters so that we can use um, our molarity. So we're going to do... Um, the 100 milliliters is equal to one liter, or um, before we were doing one milliliter is equal to 10 to the negative third liters. Either of them is correct, um, just depending on what you wanna do. Or just move the decimal place over three. Totally fine. Okay, um, once we're in liters, we can use our molarity of sodium hydroxide. So that's the 0.100 molar um, sodium hydroxide. We're converting out of liters. At this point, we can jump over to um, HCl um, using a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. So in our balanced chemical equation, our coefficients are all ones. We like that. So um, we're going to do this conversion. We're going to put it in our calculator, and we should get um, 0.001254 moles of HCl we are not rounding until the very end because we're not done. We want to know the concentration, so moles over liters of our um, hydrochloric acid solution. So we're taking our number in moles, dividing by our number in liters, so I just moved the decimal place over three to the left, um, so we get 0.01000 um, liters. So keep in with our sig figs there. Once we do that division in our calculator, we should get a molarity of 0.125 um, for our hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, so now we know our molarity. At first we didn't, but we need to know um, everything else in order um, to solve for that. So let's look um, at the shortcut way. So um, we're going to be using SA, so SA, MA, VA is equal to SB, MV, VB. So SA is the subscript on our hydrogen um, in our acid. So HCl, we don't have a subscript, so it's one. So this is one. Our molarity of our acid, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the concentration of our acid. That's our unknown. So I'm gonna leave that as MA. We know the volume of our hydrochloric acid that we um, put in our flask. Um, and we're gonna convert that to liters since we are doing something with molarity. So I'm gonna move the decimal place over um, three to the left. So keep in with our four sig figs there. Okay, so now we're doing the subscript on our hydroxide ion. Uh, sorry, our hydroxide, yeah, in our base. So NaOH, there is no parentheses and a number outside. So this is one as well. So we're not looking at our coefficients. We are looking at the subscripts on these guys. They are both ones. Um, all right, so our molarity for our base is this point. One zero zero molar solution, and then for our volume, convert to a um, to liters. We get that 
0.01254 liters. All right, at this point, we are gonna multiply these two guys <clears throat> and then divide by 0 0.01. And we will get the same answer that we got up here. So 0 0.125 molar HCl solution. Either one is correct. If you like the shortcut version, go with the shortcut version. If you want to go on an adventure, do it the long way. I like the adventures, so long way for me. Okay, let's look at example number eight. What volume in liters of 0 0.101 molar sodium hydroxide solution is required to reach the endpoint in a complete titration of 10 milliliter sample of 0.138 molar sulfuric acid? Okay. So we need a balanced chemical equation if we're going to solve it the long way. So I, um, I'm just going to show you the long way, the work that I did, and then I'll walk through the short way with you um, because I don't have that work down here. So basically we're converting out of milliliters going to liters, and then we are using our molarity of um, sulfuric acid in order to convert to moles of sulfuric, sulfuric acid, at which point we can go to moles of sodium hydroxide, um, and then using our molarity of, of sodium hydroxide, we can go to liters. So 0 0.0273 liters sodium hydroxide that we need for a complete titration. Okay, so let's do um, our short way. So here's my work from the last problem. Um, so we're still using this equation. So we're looking at the subscript of hydrogen in our acid. So here we do have a subscript. That's a two. So two times our molarity of our acid. So we're given that here. So 0.138 molar sulfuric acid. Um, and then we're looking for our volume of our acid. So that's, oh, we're given that, sorry. Um, that's this uh, 10 milliliters, but we're going to convert that to liters. So still three sig figs, just move the decimal place over three is equal to, so SB is the subscript of hydroxide in our base. So notice it's still NaOH. We don't have parentheses and like a two outside. Um, so this is still one. And we know the molarity of sodium hydroxide. And we're looking for our volume of our base. So VB. So we are gonna multiply these three guys and then divide by 0 0.010 and we will get the same answer that we got up here, just in a shortened, less adventurous way, really. So 0 0.0273 liters sodium hydroxide required for a complete titration of sulfuric acid. Okay, um, next thing that we're talking about are strong and weak acids and bases. Um, so for strong acids and strong bases, these guys are strong electrolytes. That means we are um, dissociating completely in water. So 100% of our molecules uh, for our acids and bases are going to um, ionize, so completely separate in water. So forming cations and anions. You need to know um, these strong acids and these strong bases. Um, especially in a chemistry laboratory, you need to know if the substance that you're working with is harmful. Um, anytime you're working like in a high school chemistry lab, the substances we're going to use are diluted. But if you are in a college chemistry laboratory, that's not always going to be the case. So you need to be able to recognize when um, we're dealing with a strong acid and strong base so that you can be especially careful because these guys can do a lot of damage. Um, because of this 100% ionization. We've got a lot of hydrogen ions that are forming, um, a lot of hydroxide ions that are forming. So our strong acids are hydrochloric acid, HCl, hydrobromic acid, HBr, hydroiodic acid, HI, nitric acid, HNO3, perchloric acid, HClO4, and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. We're going to talk about this diprotic um, little thing in parentheses in just a second. Our strong bases are lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. 
strontium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. So if you're looking at a periodic table, um, you'll notice that lithium, sodium, potassium, they're in the same group, so group one, um, just going down the periodic table. You'll also notice that potassium um, and calcium, they are right next to each other. So we are going over one in the periodic table. And then we're going down strontium and barium. So we're forming like a little line Tetris shape thing there. Um, definitely looks Tetris-esque um, on a periodic table. But lithium, sodium, potassium, over to calcium, down to strontium, barium. So that's probably your easiest way to remember your strong bases. Strong acids, um, you just got to remember those guys. Um, okay, so if something is completely ionizing in water, um, we're going to indicate that with an arrow, so just a single arrow um, in indicating that our hydrochloric acid solution in water is going to completely separate into hydronium ions. So remember, hydrogen ions in water, they're going to form hydronium ions um, and chlorine. So complete ionization, 100% of our hydro um, hydrogen chloride ions, hydrochloric acid ions, are going to separate. Um, okay, so weak acids and weak bases. These guys are weak electrolytes. So um, if we were to put like a, a current, like an electric current in strong acids and bases, that electric current would be, um, would continue on in, um, in the solution because of these ions that are forming. But with weak acids and weak bases, they're weak electrolytes. That means they don't carry um, electric current very easily because um, <laughs> of our ionization. So these guys are only going to partially ionize. Less than 1% of our weak acids and base molecules are going to, to ionize, to form hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions in water. Um, so how we indicate that, so hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. It's not on our list of strong acids. Um, we're going to indicate that with a double arrow um, to indicate that we're forming both of these. It's not just a one-way reaction where we're forming um, our um, hydronium ions and fluorine ions. We're going both ways. So if we have less than 1% ionization, most of our, our guys are going to be over here um, as um, um, hydrofluoric acid. Um, but we are forming some, so less than 1% um, of hydro hydronium ions and then uh, fluoride ions. Here is where we're going back to that diprotic that we have up here with sulfuric acid. So diprotic means that um, we have two ionizable protons. So notice we have a subscript on our hydrogen. Both of those hydrogens can separate um, and we'd form a hydrogen ion, a hydrogen ion, um, an SO4 negative two in solution. So diprotic, we got two ionizable protons, these guys here. For um, triprotic, we have three ionizable protons. So H3PO4 is our example there. Basically, we can form three hydrogen ions, or separate into three hydrogen ions, and then a phosphate. PO4 and negative 3. Um, so that's what diprotic and triprotic mean. So we're going to see these in acids. Um, okay, so let's look at example number 9. So classify each of the following acids as strong or weak. So we are going to be looking at our um, strong acid table in uh, table 14.3. Hydro HCl, hydrochloric acid. It is right here. It's number one on our list. That is a strong acid. Um, hydrofluoric acid. That is not on our list of strong acids. So it is a weak acid. Hydrobromic acid. That is on our list of strong acids. So that's one of our um, six strong acids. And then H2SO3, um, sulfurous acid. That is a weak acid. It is not H2SO4. It's not sulfuric acid, so it's weak. All right, let's look at example number 10. What is the hydronium concentration of each of the following solutions? 
So basically, if we have 100% ionization, all of the um, molecules of our acid or base are going to um, form that many of our um, uh, hydronium ions. So basically, we can think about it as the concentration, so the brackets mean concentration, the concentration of a strong acid is going to equal the hydronium ion concentration. So with letter A, um, 1.5 molar hydrochloric acid, it's a strong acid, therefore I had our hydronium ion concentration is the same. All of these, um, this 1.5 moles of um, HCl in one liter of solution, all of those hydrogen ions are going to form 1.5 um, uh, concentration of um, hydronium ions. We are going to skip letter B because it is a um, it's a weak acid. Weak acids require a lot more um, math, and we need to know um, need to talk about like equilibrium constants. I'm not going to test you on that, so we're actually not going to cover that. So you can go ahead and cross out letter B. All right, um, and then let's look at um, example number 11. So is the hydroxide, what is the hydroxide concentration in each of the following solutions? So letter A, we're dealing with a strong base. So if we're dealing with a strong base, that means that um, we have 100% ionization, like we were talking about up here. Um, and our strong acids and bases. That means that all of the hydroxide ions are going to dissociate um, in solution. So that means that our um, concentration of hydroxide ions is going to equal the molarity of our, our strong base. Um, so those are going to be the same. So that's just a nice easy way to figure out um, percent ionization. We're not going to do weak acids and bases um, here. All right, um, last thing that we need to talk about before you can actually do your homework, um, the acids and bases worksheet, is to talk about this definition of um, amphoteric. So amphoteric um, means that our substance can act as an acid or base. So our example there is water. Um, so remember from um, example number one here, Water was a Bronsted-Lowry base, and then over here, water is a Bronsted-Lowry acid. So water likes to follow none of our nice little rules um, in chemistry. It likes to follow its own rules. Um, so we had to come up with a nice definition um, in order to describe water. So it's amphoteric, can act as an acid or a base depending on what it's being combined with. So here... Um, we have a hydrochloric acid and then added to water. So that hydrochloric acid is going to donate its hydrogen ion, um, or its proton, to water. So we're forming hydronium ion, this conjugate acid, and then our conjugate base, um, our chloride ion. But down here with ammonia, ammonia is acting as a base um, and it's going to form a conjugate acid. It's going to accept that proton from water. And here water is acting as an acid because it's donating a, um, a proton and forming a conjugate base of hydroxide ion. All right, so at this point, you have all the information you need to um, do the acids and base worksheet.